So when we talk of like the Anthropocene or the kind of situation that we are in, we shouldn't just be like, oh, like suddenly we woke up and like humanity has gone. No, uh, there is there is the 500 years of colonialism that has focused, and not everyone is victim of it in the same way. Um, of course, there is a very strong um, urge to to connect and to be to be fighting together for the liberation of the land. Indigenous people, colonized people, should be at the forefront of that, and colonialism should be a uh, integral uh, feature of this of this analysis. Time. A few things. White supremacy. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! So I don't really need to talk about that for a really long time because it's on the shirt. We should destroy it. Um, another connection between white supremacy and climate justice is, of course, the refugee crisis. Um, there is so there are such intimate connections between um, imperialist wars connected to fossil fuel extraction and the fact that now we keep. Uh, um, certain people out that are really already facing the effects of climate change. Uh, Shiro gave an example of that the other day, where uh, a climate refugee was uh, climate refugee um, was denied asylum, and it sets a precedent for what's going to happen. Uh, we need to intervene in that. All connected. So the rise of the white supremacist uh, uh, right as well is something that is all part should all be part of our story. Um, I think that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. intersectionality work group for Go The Road. Um, and our goal is really to highlight how what we are doing here um, isn't just about coal, isn't just about the fossil fuel industry, but it's really about justice. Um, and it's really about um, not just justice for the environment and for the animals, but also for the people um, that are very directly affected by climate change. A lot of times we have the tendency to talk about climate change like it's this future problem that we are going to face. Um, there are so many people around the world that are already facing this and our, our using of that language erases those people's current lived experiences. Um, it erases um, the, the trauma, the things that they have to deal with and so our work group really wants to bring these discussions to the forefront, make them a part of what our movement is about um, and, and to recognize how all of these struggles, like everything you mentioned, colonialism and white supremacy and capitalism, how all of these things are fundamentally intertwined um, and they make climate change the big struggle that we all kind of collectively have to deal with in different ways. Um, and so that's really what, what our group um, is hoping, hoping to do. Um, and that's why I'm here. That's it. Yeah, and I will actually touch upon that in a sense that I really feel um, if we are all connected, if we form a strong group, it doesn't mean what you believe in, it doesn't mean what you don't believe in, but actually if you stand up for what you actually believe in and if you find ways to form and, and a group, and then this climate thing can actually become bigger than we could ever imagine because this is a reality and this is a mother earth. This is where we are actually living and if we don't take care of it now, I think it will be late to, uh, for tomorrow for our grandchildren. And by forming a group, I've been involved with uh, undocumented migrants in, in, in Amsterdam and another name of we are here. We've actually um, started this protest movement five years ago and, and it is still going on up to now and we've achieved a lot in, in a sense that uh, a couple of years back, and the right-wing politi and politics and politicians tried and, and to actually and criminalize illegality in a sense that if you um, are found on the street without a valid document, then you can be fined 3,900 euros, knowing that you don't have that. But that would be a way to take you to detention, and we fought that, and it is and we fought it hard, and, and for it not to be in, in within in, within the law. And, and I think and by having that experience within forming that, and, and, and it really started from grassroots. 
and, and our movement really started from there. And, and with the experience that we have now, or with the experience that I do have now, and I think we, and, and, and by combining all of us, and where all the sectors that we are coming from, and, and to try to tackle this and, and climate, and, and because this is, this, is, this, is, this is a thing, this is reality, and we should not just let it go. And I, that is what I need to add to that. I uh, am from the trade union, Dutch one, and uh, I'm in the climate network there. My name is Arwen, by the way. I have a slightly different perspective, I guess, from most people here. What we are trying to do in the climate network is to uh, unite workers, and that's really hard. We all know, and we really would like the, the cold mouse to close, you know, like yesterday, but we also <coughs> represent people who work there, who work in Skipple, who work in Groningen uh, for the NAM work wherever. So these people are often really proud of their work because they've been doing it for generations, maybe even. So there's one aspect of the problem that makes it a bit harder for the trade union to go all out and say, close the damn thing right now, which I would really prefer, of course, obviously. Um, how do you unite people behind this banner that we are raising, that climate change should be um, addressed and should be addressed really quickly and should be addressed together and united because there's loads and loads of division at the moment internationally but also nationally. You have politicians that go right wing and say everybody out. You have people who say don't close my workplace because where am I going to go? And you get what we call uh, together with Milieu Defensi uh, Energy Armuda. So just energy poverty that is now if you lose your job and you have a cheap house and you don't have a very high income you cannot afford to get the subsidies to get your house done sustainably so how are you going to do it so people are falling behind now even in the, in the Netherlands and then you get the whole international the ITUC the international trade union who also want climate change addressed but well if you're a factory worker in Bangladesh you're probably not going to be that bothered yet by climate change because you feel powerless to do something. So how do we unite people behind this banner without being even more divisive? That is our question, basically. Of course, we also have ideas, by the way. So it's my honor to ask the first question. And since we are here at Golden Roads and Golden Road Intersectionality Group, has organized this. Um, I was wondering, Lisa, if you perhaps can say a little bit more about you know, what the connection are between this action that uh, we're gonna do Saturday and with climate justice. You know, What is the background story to that or what is the message um, you as Go to Road or we as a group would like to um, pass on if it's about climate justice? Sure, um, so for us, climate justice um, means a lot of different things. Um, I think it, addresses socioeconomic justice, so things like, you know, people that are impacted by displacement um, because of corporations and oil companies coming in and displacing indigenous people and um, displacing uh, indigenous farmers and basically occupying their lands, um, things like that, so socioeconomic, which also ties in with workers, 100%, um, things like the, the refugees and climate refugees, which is also a term that's kind of loaded. Um, so people who are displaced because of climate change. And so um, for us, all of these things tie into what we're doing here at Go The Road because right now we're here to um, protest what happens at the Amsterdam port. Um, and so the Amsterdam port brings in a huge number of about 18 kilohertz, <coughs> I'm probably not saying that right, but very, very huge numbers of coal uh, that comes in from South Africa, from Colombia, from Russia. Um, huge amounts of that coal that comes in from Colombia um, is associated with human rights violations in Colombia because the oil companies and the corporations that are basically clearing the land for the mining and for all these things to happen and transporting the coal, the coal they're uh, basically hiring paramilitary um, organizations to kick out all of the indigenous people and take over those lands. 